calling the meeting to order. Okay. Um, <laughs> and we have public, public, Joe Public, would you like to? I'm just stay? here listening today. Okay. No, she can participate. Joe Public Absolutely. has. Absolutely. We'll we'll I'm, give you the I'm not here for any public comment. Oh, wait, here's somebody. Oh. No, it doesn't look like that. They're returning books. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, number three, introduction of new committee coordinator. That's her title. Oh, I was okay. Okay, thank you. Yes. So welcome, Karen. Thank you. Um, I'm glad to be here tonight. Um, like you said, I am Karen Snortland. I'm the new committee coordinator for the town of Superior. Um, it's a new position for the town, which I'm sure most of you are aware of. Um, there are other positions like mine out there. I've been doing a lot of research in the month and a couple weeks that I've been here, and I'm finding out, because um, actually when I applied, I, I looked around and I couldn't find any other positions. And now that I've been here, I've been able to dig a little deeper. And City of Fort Collins has um, same title as mine, committee coordinator, obviously much on a much larger scale. Um, but I've been um, communicating with her and um, doing a lot of um, work figuring out how to do this the, uh, this position through um, talking with her. So it's been great. Um, one of the first things that's on my um, uh, agenda in working in this position is putting together a survey that will go out to all of the committees. Um, it's basically just a committee that, or a, excuse me, a survey that will um, kind of go over the effectiveness of committees, your satisfaction as serving on a committee, um, kind of get some ideas for recruitment and the appointment process um, and utilizing that feedback from it's going to go to committee members, um, staff liaisons and potentially board liaisons um, to kind of get their feedback and then I'm going to utilize that feedback in putting together um, an official onboarding process, some training um, and some recruitment um, ideas through what I find out from all of you. So that will be going out in June, uh, second week of June, second or third week of June. So when you see that, um, we're just finalizing parts of it today. It should only take you 12 to 13 minutes. <laughs> but if you have lots of feedback that you would like to give us beyond answering the questions, it may take a little bit longer, but do feel free um, to give us honest uh, feedback because I, I do want to be able to utilize that in moving forward. Um, with my uh, position and putting together some processes across the board so that we um, all committees are functioning pretty much the same way as far as how they put their agendas together, how they write their notes, um, how they're you know making recommendations uh, to the to the board. Um, so I'm I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to kind of put some some processes <clears throat> and guidelines in place for for the committees. So it should be good. Do you actually handle the whole committee member recruitment? Yes. Okay. Yep. So I'll be doing that, and so and I'm watching all the vacancies, and we have had we filled four spots uh, within the last couple of weeks, and then we have uh, May 29th we'll have two more interviews for other committees, um, and then June 11th is the reappointment process, which I know that three of you are up for the reappointment process. Um, so that'll be so after once that's all finished and we have everyone in place. Then I'll be doing late summer a, a big push for recruitment. And then um, I know that you guys have, do we have the bullet points on here? No, I didn't include uh, bullet points, but I'll send those to you. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was something that um, I had um, requested of all the committees. Um, and that I really believe is um, kind of a part of the recruitment process is to get out to the community what all the committees are working on. Um, it's, it's just a really good way for them to see and be like, hey, that's cool, I wanna be a part of that, or I have an idea, um, just to kind of spark some interest. And we're gonna start small with the pros newsletter and potentially grow to other areas um, where we can get out the information to the community. The what newsletter? The, there's an online uh, Parks and Recs newsletter. Do you know what the, um, uh, how many people are subscribed to it? The distribution yeah. list? Mm -hmm. So Katie yeah. sends it out. Almost 7,000 people. Wow. Okay. No, so um, we don't get that's any. the Sentinel? No. Oh, so the pros, we, we use the same kind of list um, for mm -hmm. the pros newsletter, but yeah, for the Sentinel too. But I, mean, I just actually looked because I posted it. We have a 30% open rate, which is really that's good. That's pretty good. For, yeah. Email. We have like a that. lot of click through rates for the pros newsletter. Well, so. yeah, that's the one you send for the. 
Park, Park District upcoming stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I would think almost everybody would click on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's it's good that people open it and read the information. Yeah. And I noticed that the bullet points they were all across the board in terms of like some people had long paragraphs. Like, were, yeah. what was your what's your sense of like what you want? Do you really want a bullet points, which is what I adhere yes. to? Yes. Yeah. Or yeah. I, I think I think we'll kind of get to where we can kind of define it a little bit better but definitely as of right now the bullet point is probably you know a better place to start because it is so much information um i was kind of surprised when a couple of those <laughs> committees sent back that what they did um but um i think as we move forward you know if it, it becomes too much for the pros newsletter we can find other avenues to put out more information okay and kind of stick with the bullet points for that, and then maybe have a link that goes to something else with more no, info. Keep it on the website, and mm -hmm. link, like an update on the website, and click sure. through. Sure. Was this bullet points for what the CAPS committee what does? We, what we had done, or what we're doing. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you sent over bullet points, some committees sent over. A little bit more than a bullet point, so a couple sentences. Yeah, it was more like a semi-automatic would... weapon sort of spray. Well, it was like the minutes were, were submitted versus, you know, I literally oh. just gave a few. Wait, what we do? Yeah. 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 And then it'll be monthly, um, so it'll continue on, and you can take those bullet points that you already have and revise them. I know a lot of the committees um, are putting it on their um, agenda so that everyone, so that not one person has to feel like they have to come up with it, um, which is fine, but if you want to do it as a committee, then you can do it that way as well. So, and then I know that some of you are also working on the, um, the temporary working group with the cemetery restoration project, and I'm going to be uh, kind of spearheading that along with Brian Meyer as well. Um, so it's kind of one of my first big projects, so I'll kind of be working on that as well. We make contact with them. The dead people. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, this thing's a lot. Don't don't uh, like disrupt her or uh, just let go. <laughs> okay. um, uh, so no, we are going forward and working construction. Is 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 Brian Meyer? Oh, there's is Brian. Oh, yeah, that's great. Is he the historical society person? So he's the staff liaison uh, oh, for the historical. For the commission. historical. Yep. And so I'm working in conjunction with him and just kind of helping spearhead with that the project. This cemetery the restoration mm -hmm. historical. Yeah, that's great. That's yes. that is kind of cool. Yeah, that should be a good project. You, you wouldn't find I what? I tried to find the cemetery. Like oh, just go um, up the bike path. Yeah. So the oh. 36 bike path, uh -huh. you go to the top of the hill before you get to the bridge crossing to uh -huh. Vista, uh -huh. it's right on your right. Well, yeah, it's a path on the Actually, it's really cool. <laughs> Make it easier to find. Okay. Yeah, there are there isn't great access to it. Yeah. It's behind the course table, you just have to look mm -hmm. behind it. Yeah. 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 Actually, if you stand right here, in the parking lot of the sports table and you look straight, straight up the up. hill there, mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. right there. There's a black fence. Uh -huh. Black rock. And it's inside there. It's kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, so if, if you ever have any questions or comments or suggestions on how committees are run, feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I am over at the sports table. So. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. That's great. Okay, on to number four, the indoor space rec center discussion review. Um, uh, Katie, do you want to give a little brief talk about what it is or do you want to <laughs> so we are um, working on adding a community center to kind of the front of the sports table. I know we've kind of talked about it. And we have some preliminary plans. Um, ProStock is working on them. The board has seen them. Um, but I know you guys had mentioned maybe doing, um, having some feedback for the community space aspect of it. So, um, which right now is all located on the third floor. So I can I can pull up the rest of the. Yeah, it'd be nice to just sort of look at the whole. But you can kind of see the whole thing. Um, um, and then the discussion, uh, the indoor survey that I have listed there is the survey that the um, ProSec committee worked on that went out to the whole community and got feedback on in terms of indoor space. And indoor space at that time included library and rec. Um, it didn't really go much beyond that, would you say, Sandy? It was mostly those in terms of community, uh, like meeting community meeting space. Yeah, that would be the other thing. Um, 
And, and when did they do the survey? 2014. 2014. So almost four years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it was very extensive. I think okay. 600 people respond. What was the right. response? Was yeah, response? I mean, the, the depth of data is astounding. I mean, right. yeah. in addition to all the just miscellaneous. So not only were they pulling data points for, of information, they, they had people write comments. And so, I mean, it's really interesting to read the comments. And um, some of the things that came out of it that I think personally are important, that um, the multifamily uh, housing units, people that responded in those in that area, library was a, a huge priority for them. Whereas the rec amenities and the pool amenities, not so much because they already have those in their communities. So I think for this piece to be successful, we need to figure out a way to appeal to um, everybody. We can't just throw, make it a rec center. So, I mean, and then, and do we have that survey somewhere? Yeah, it's online exactly. and there's a link to it oh, on okay. our agenda. Too. Oh, okay. got it. So okay. Are you talking about the same survey that was um, sent out? No, this must have been totally different because that was in the fall. There was one about the northwest area. No, no, no. Yeah, no, this is a different yeah. survey. Okay. Then it was a like pretty that. extensive yeah. indoor space okay. um, <laughs> trying to figure out the needs. We're going to get to that one in number five. Yeah. yeah. No, and Claire's actually has some good thoughts on it as well on the Northwest area. So, um, so this, do you guys all, are you familiar with the area that we're talking about where this might go? Yeah, where that empty. Yeah, and where the, where the drop off, that uh, horseshoe drop off is. Okay, so this is the first floor. This is like right here would be kind of that, that road in front of the sports stable. So this would go where the horseshoe area is. That's actually Marshall, isn't it? Isn't no. It Marshall that That's it one superior drive. Plaza. Okay. So I'm looking at the sports stable like this. Can you show us There's a picture a drop of the sports stable? Maybe from the yeah, out. It, like there are all outside of that drawings. Space. So like Brunelleschi's is hmm. going to be if you go to the um, plaza, the patio, it looks at the mountains. Agenda. They have yeah. all the exterior. Um, go to yeah, the board agenda on Monday night has all kinds of. It's very nerve wracking watching. Have you on what day? Do you mean this? <laughs> um, and your meeting oh. Monday, there were all kinds of. Um, at the top, maybe? Documents? Yeah. That have... No, it's No, it's, it's this, is, this is where oh, Patrick did it, yeah. Okay, sorry. Huh. Where was I looking? Dean, oh, community just interrupted. Interrupted. So this is something uh, we plan on... Uh, maybe I was wrong. I think if you just call up Sports Stable, Google Sports Stable Superior, you'll come up with a picture. Well, yeah, but um, at your meeting Monday night, there are all kinds of documents associated with uh, updated design. Huh. Oh, the show document link? Well, that's that show document link is for the survey, the 2014 survey. Right. This is kind of, it's like right in this area. You know, you walk in right, right. here. Yeah. So it's, it's, it'd be like. You still have that staircase. So it'd be take, take away that right space right there. You yeah. still have that. The staircase that's totally. Totally. Would, there, would it be like a corner? All that's left is like a so did you look at was corridor. it the retreat where you actually looked at the plan? That's probably what you need to look at. Right. Oh, maybe that's where Is the retreat. That right. I missed. Yeah, the retreat. Um, that's where you can actually see April the, the 2018. Design. No, 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 right yeah. there. Oh, there, no, right there. They're all right there. I know. This is the retreat. Oh, okay. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I found it. Careful, careful. <laughs> We're so glad you're here, Sandy. Okay, that's oh, what happens. So it sticks it's right there. Right there. Okay. And so those three yeah. floors are what they are proposing. And this, there you go. This is a separate facility from the sports stable, technically. It's not just part of the sports stable. So I think it's being proposed as separate walls. Yes. Yeah. 
So there's really not a grand entrance to the sports stable. In the, it's like you're walking through that little hallway. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tunnel-esque. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, a tunnel little bit of is, uh, background right there. The, the design that you're seeing is the design that was actually prepared by the folks at the sports stable because we had originally asked them to come up with a design. And that's part of what we're asking for comment from you on is, this is the design that the sports stable had presented, but now we're actually looking at this being a standalone that the town will own and operate in conjunction with the sports stable. So that's why it's, there are definitely shifts that could be made in the design. Well, wasn't there at one point in time also at one of the board meetings, when they started approaching you know, the idea of doing this, there was a design firm hired or something that was going to come up with designs for what this would look like? Do those exist? Did that not happen? It's Did a long process. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's been a design that would have been suitable for the Richmond 15. Um, there is this design, uh, this idea at first, it was to be a uh, partnership with Impact Sports and Sports Stable, et cetera. It seems to be morphing more now to an independent in which they lease <coughs> time and space from us. And I'm going to throw out there, because I this is my view, I do think it's re relevant to comment whether or not this, as proposed, uh, this as redesigned or proposed or whatever meets the needs of this community or if we're trying to squeeze too much mm -hmm. into a space that may not be big enough. I think that is all relevant. Um, so so this, is, this is sports staples design. There does not exist another design by an... This is the operative design. This is, so this don't is even get distracted. Okay, right there's now. no right this is the, This firm. is the only okay. one that's on okay. the table being discussed at this okay. point. Yeah. Well, I have to say I'm aesthetically really disappointed. I, you know, in the back of my mind is the future of um, Superior, Superior Goes Forward. We talk about having a, a town center and an and a, uh, event down there. I was picturing that mural that we were all going to like paint and put together being, you know, mounted on two by fours or something temporarily in the open space there at the sports table and, you know, changing exhibits of, you know, a local artist on a pedestal or something like that. And it's serving as a really foundation gathering place for the town. And to just, like, make it a complete wall of business and window fronts, you know, for a stretch of three blocks long just seems to me to destroy a significant amount of aesthetic space. Well, that, that space yeah. was always intended to be built out. Like that, though? And well, the, I don't like know if specifically. The, oh, yeah, no, it was, that whole yeah. space, there was going to, initially in the initial design, there was going to be a pool there. But it was low, and Brunelleschi's patio still had a view. Yeah, oh, yeah, and absolutely. And it was significantly different. We could go back to the um, FDP. Some of us are unclear as to why that was modified without board involvement because one would could say it was a, a, a material well, yeah. amendment well, that, that should come back to the board. I mean, five years ago when we went through the whole process of getting downtown approved, there was that whole visual thing of the restaurant that looked out over the sports fields and there was going to be the plaza. And, and it was those of us who were strong supporters of the town center at that time we're working on this concept of what the Ranch Capital originally brought to the board of a very cool downtown. And what happened? There to still that? is. Across the street will be the plaza. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, the plaza will still be there. And when Parks 1 and 2 and that part is developed, okay. there still will be a yes. really cool. Yes. I mean, this okay. is just. Well, yeah. Yeah, so, so and yeah, what's, maybe. What's <laughs> Everything's morphing. What, what is right so, across the street? The how, town plaza. It's and that is good to be vigilant. Of empty space? Um, and is this the only proposed space? It's at least one of the blocks. Community center? Like one block. Well, I think, yes. so I think initially when this space. location came about as our rec center, it was a private, public-private partnership okay. was being thrown about. And so now I think the question on the table is, is it better off that we, if this is going to be ours and we are funding it, and 
and solely in charge of it, do we want a standalone piece and not an attachment to the sports stable? What benefit are we getting because it's attached to the sports stable? Right. Was um, it cost? Uh, well, the cost keeps going up. It's yeah. close to $20 million I, now. From yeah, the I guess the, the conversation I would like, I'd like you to look at what so has been that. designed. Because this is, this is a box from the outside. But I think you need to have a, a vision of what it's like from the inside. Well, and, the and that's where that we we'll look at it. And then we can have, obviously, it's going to cost money. Um, but get a sense of what we're trying to accomplish here, mm -hmm. and then also look at the indoor survey so you can see the kinds of things that our residents wanted. Okay. And you may not be able to give all your comments tonight. Mm -hmm. Is is the court on the left hand side impact sports, or is that part of that double no. line or that real dark line? Everything to that side is impact sports. Okay, it's kind of weird that they keep yeah. it. It shows like it's. So, right. but remember the original this design what, this what was what put together about? by Impact Sports yes. mm -hmm. and Sandy, the sports. Network. We're talking about this square, yeah, yeah, yes. right here, yes. and then it's going to be three stories high, right? Right, three stories, and it's Correct. seventeen thousand one hundred and eighty square feet okay. each floor, essentially. Yeah. So, what this is, is oh, this floor, is second this floor. the second floor, and, and this then is the third, third floor. floor. Right. The third. But go back to the second floor again. This is the second floor of our facility, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the existing, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. At impact. Okay. And then the third floor, there is no third floor of impact. No. So this is the entire third floor of our thing. Mm -hmm. And when people talk, when you're pointing out things, just to use this, and then we'll all know what you're pointing out. What are those rooms? Uh, well, here's a, Katie brought a printed, a printed um, piece. And so just rooms that people can rent. Where, where are the windows? So um, actually, Katie, on the do, bottom you, if you go back to the right hand, there so are actually beautiful ones. Well, this is the people standing in the... Sandy, would you use this? I'm not good with these things. I don't even know how to work. Just the little, watch out, that. don't blind yourself. Okay. So these rooms, the, this down here, and I'm sorry I'm the one that has to kind of give you the information, but being a liaison to ProStack, I kind of know most of this. This part down here is actually one very large community room that can be subdivided into small rooms. Oh, the, the moving door, the moving walls. Yeah, it's got the moving walls. Okay. This, all across here, is glass. So it looks out toward, so when we lose Brunelleschi's, we as a town would actually get this because this will look out over the flat iron and this in the front range and this is actually a deck patio that you could have events or whatever. Now, where's the glass? This is all totally. glass. There's right a nice there. rendering that shows yeah, what it's it's a, yeah, okay. beautiful. After we go through what the okay. rooms are, we Do can go to the yeah, okay. rooms. And then this was, or in this original plan, this is all sort of open recreation space. We could put workout equipment there, we could have all kinds of, I, when Impact Sports visualized this, this was all workout equipment. These are offices, this is a senior, I think, teen room, this is a uh, warming kitchen area, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think this area is uh, therapy rooms, because you gotta remember, this was partly being designed by Impact Sports mm -hmm. to meet their needs. So that kind of gives you a sense of what it is. What ProStack is envisioning is that there will be two designs. This design will remain intact, and then we will have a revised design, and we'll take the impact of ProStack, and then if we get additional ProStack that Katie will take back to Patrick, then when Patrick meets with the designers, we can make some changes to it. And are those offices intended for management of the facility, or? They are. Okay. They are, and they would be, you know, those could be impact sports folks, they could be our folks, because now we've got the pool on mm -hmm. the first level that we're gonna have to manage, and I think the, the kind of Im image was with this, that impact sports would do, like, physical education, recreation, but the pool side, the town of Superior staff would manage, because we have expertise in that. But and why, if you have, I mean, if you look at it from a community aspect, it's 17,000 square feet, which is really not that big when you think about it. I mean, it's not small. I'm trying How to compare to the entire facility. 
Well, each floor is 17,000 square feet. So did you compare it to lifetime? Each floor or is 17,000. Each of these is about 17,000. Yeah, no, well, lifetime was what, 100,000 square feet. It was huge. Almost. Sandy, thank you for uh, explaining. Just trying now to get you some Now context. I understand what you were saying about wait and see the view from the inside. And um, I, I, I feel like um, there's a, a thing about not understanding for me, and that is that I feel like as a member of this committee, I have to be concerned with what it looks like from the outside, from the public space, and place that ahead of what people occupying the rooms might look over their shoulder and see mm -hmm. out the front window. I understand. So uh, that's why I'm still kind of um, resistant, especially when you, you tell me that the plaza is only like one square block of green space. There will be else? lots of green space throughout the whole whole downtown. So there's two the two pieces yeah. to look like a plaza yeah. anymore, it seems to me. Mm -hmm. um, and that has nothing to do with the plaza. The plaza yeah. was never there. Yeah. It was further to the mainstream yeah. 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 Well, yeah. But her, her point was that there's this big open space, but it really isn't if it's only one square block of green space across from it, this. The plaza this isn't the green. The, the plaza, plaza is, is green. green. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's, it's open brick gathering space, you know, look like at a Pearl Street Mall. Yeah. Uh, and how what it actually contains is yet to necessarily be settled on, but it's a brick gathering space that you could just gather whenever you wanted to or events could be held on the brick, et cetera, et cetera. Um, um, be, uh, I, I feel this meeting is going to be time constrained because you really have a heavy duty agenda here. Yeah. The, yeah, to cut me, I, to the I, chase. I, I just made it, you know, no, but and I all of, no more. <laughs> all, of this I, is, all of this is very <laughs> relevant. I've been hurt. But this is on a really tight deadline. And uh, because some of us have insisted that if this goes forward, it actually appears on the ballot this November so the community can vote on it rather than the board making a decision to take $20 million out of operating funds, right? So it's going to be a community decision. Um, if it goes on this ballot, literally it's got to go to uh, uh, the Boulder County elections by like August, August. early August, yeah. right? First, so first, we're first in nearly end of May. So everything's got to go very fast. And that, I will opine from a trustee position that troubles me. I, I think this is a big enough project that uh, we need to do it systematically. And if we don't have enough time, well, maybe we should wait till next year's election, you know, that kind of thing. But th what this group um, is being asked their opinion for is from an art and cultural perspective. You don't even have to even know three floors and how many feet on each floor and all that kind of stuff. If you just sat here and brainstormed and said, <coughs> we would like in any community center such and 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 such. What would those items be? Well, it, would, it wouldn't be the third floor. Right, I was going to say, the whole... <laughs> no, what would they be? Okay, so if you would, it, it, would, would it be a performance stage? Yeah. I, I, I can make a list on that's yeah. why I okay. printed that yeah. out yeah. so that you guys so don't, can focus on that. Right. So don't even be encumbered. Act like you haven't seen so any of this. So for instance, I know that my neighborhood, when we meet over at Sports Table, and it's usually probably 80 people. First of all, it's cramped, it's dark, it's smelly. If you're gonna take my neighborhood, what about the Chamber of Commerce Women in Business Group that meets at the fire station? Meeting areas. You need community building meeting areas for a two-year-old toddler time. Um, you might even have summer camps. A, a cooking class area, community building mm -hmm. space. You might even have it, it doesn't even have to be big. It could be just like half of this room for maybe check out books or something, or a, so that teens can meet and have some place to hang out. Seniors can have some place. It's that community building aspect and whether it's performing arts, you might, you're right. You might want to have a ballet space for three-year-olds, for instance, or maybe you want a swing dancing 
for 60 year olds or whatever. It's community space, not just a bunch of little right. little rooms where you're trying to, and, and, and that's forgetting that, but I think that the one thing that Superior really lacks is a community gathering space. I mean, I belong to Lifetime, you know, you use the pool. If you really feel strongly about that, you can go to Lifetime. Or the same thing with the Louisville Rec Center. You go to the Louisville Rec Center. So you have options for bike paths and that kind of stuff, but we don't have a meeting space. It feels like the soul of the town, basically. Where are we going to have that? When's that going to happen for any of this stuff? And right. I think that I had lunch with three other Superior residents today, and the four of us were like, there's just no place. You don't want to, you know, and I don't know who would know how that's going to look, how it's going to feel. But what do you do to bring all those people together? So let's build on this. Let's make a, a shopping list of what this group, because you're the only group charged with thinking culturally, artistically, et cetera. ProStex got the rec down, and they've mm -hmm. got the community functions as well being considered, et cetera. So from What are the community caps, functions? No, let's talk about caps, because you're going to want to go to agenda item number five pretty quickly. I just want to mention, if you guys have things, that's outside of our vision, email Patrick. Like, if you see things that, you know, there's something outside of what this, you know, committee has been charged to do, send myself an email, send Patrick an email, and as a <coughs> resident, you can then okay. yeah. voice those opinions. So but, does that make sense? But yeah, after you're done, if there's time at the end, Sandy can recap mm -hmm. sort of what they would thought last night, but we don't want to wait this meeting by what they said. No, we want to do right. our own thing. Right, right. So, so clear you think. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a couple questions. Is the idea that the fees here would be relatively low as a town, as a community? Hopefully. Like no, they're going to be competitive with the marketplace. They're not going to be competitive with Lifetime Fitness. But they're going to, I mean, you know, they're not going to be Lifetime Fitness. Like that. But they're going to be competitive with what probably we have, you would find over at the like Louisville Community Center. Center. Thing. But it'd be, you know, we'd have the preferred rate. Yeah. We cannot, it's it's going to cost hundreds of thousands of yeah. dollars a year to operate this. Yeah. But the goal is to have it be competitive like any other public community center. But it's you not. will pay more than that because there most likely will be a property tax mill levy. And oh, yeah. we're also considering uh, boosting sales tax. So there's going to be financial impacts, and those will be all spelled out as this goes to the ballot because it has that's the ballot language X number of mills added to your property tax, and X percent added to everybody who shops in Superior's sales tax. And then if you belong, you pay, let's say, I don't know, $50 an individual a month and $100 for a family or 40 and 80 or yeah. whatever it might it's come not, out. I mean, there's, it looks like there's no child care, so I don't see it as a really a family thing. Well, right, so let's, except let's, for the pool. Well, well, okay, so let's look at our yeah. wish list. Let's, let, let's just okay. talk. Mm -hmm. So like, right. if, we, if we built a community center and we aren't even looking at this, we're not taking yes. into account square footage, what do we as okay. a committee want to see in a community so, center? I, I, I just want to, like, really quick, just give two cents. This, this is not an arts and cultural space. Mm -hmm. This is a recreation center. Mm -hmm. And I, the primary thing is like it's kind of silly to try to force it into being both at the same time. You know, everybody would, would I think, use this and enjoy it the way it is. But it's kind of like it doesn't really make sense to put a library next to the exercise area. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't see that as an ideal but spot for it. Do not be constrained by this. What does this yeah. community most need in this committee's opinion? Well, <laughs> and, and I would also say that I, I agree with you on that, yeah. but I also think if this goes forward and it passes, if we don't get the library and the performance center, so the thing that we thing. want in there now, it's going to be a long time before okay. that comes back around and we have money yeah. to do So that was my next so. question. Is this an either or? If we build this, forget it. We're not getting... Um, in art gallery, we're not getting community gardens. We're not well, getting environments. Uh, the fact is, we don't know. It's like this is our only chance. We to don't get know some arts because if the community passes this and your property tax goes up and you have to pay monthly and your sales tax and all that kind of stuff, how likely is the community then, at a to later date, to do the same thing yeah. to 
achieve those other amenities that are not included in this, right? And they may go to another ballot. I actually think that those issues should always go to a ballot because they're big ticket items, right? Mm -hmm. That either the residents collectively of this community want in this community or they don't want. That's why I feel strongly it should go to the ballot and not be made just by seven people up there. So, but I'm term limited, and guess what? The next board may not feel the same way as Sandy, right? So anyway, um, so you take that risk. There are no guarantees of anything. If, if this uh, design is approved by four members of the board as appropriate to go on the ballot, right, by one, the majority, right, it will go on the ballot. If it's approved, it will be built as it is presented on the ballot, right? So that's why you've got to focus, um, I believe the quite correct question is, what is it that you guys feel is most essential from an art, culture, community, building, gathering, what your charter is, all those little bullet points on your charter, what are the most important things that you think should be in here? All right, well, <clears throat> I don't think this is a good space for any art or cultural things, but I think the things that we all want are like community gardens, area for farmer's market, library, some type of gallery, artist maker space, place for artist classes. Somebody things typing like on that. this down. And can you think of anything else? Sculpture garden. Sculpture garden, yeah. Um, yeah, but that... That is kind of the arts. Right. So can uh, help me understand, what's a sculpture garden? Well, like a, uh, like maybe like along the creek there, having some sculptures. Oh, so you're talking about a display yeah. page. I mean, this is going to be a, a... Like an outdoor. I, like I an have outdoor absolutely sculpture. no skin in the game of what goes in the center, other than the fact that I totally agree with all of you that this is a community gathering space. If we're going to spend money on this, that's what our focus needs to be because we have lots of amenities. So we need to do recreational or whatever it is. So what we need, you know, part of the reason we wanted to bring it here tonight was to really hear from a, from a group of people who really want to do programming. You know, what is the arts and cultural programming that you would visualize that we could do in, in a space? Because the reality space. is, mm -hmm. we, we do still possibly have space in Superior Town Center. There's 40,000 square feet that we have access to. It might never get built. And so think about, if this is the space we have available to us, what would you like to see as a priority? You know, we know we have a relationship with a library, but would we like to be able to see makerspace activities or other things that might be library, you know, across the bridge, that these would be our library type services. So that's what we're kind of challenging you to think about because honestly, we think facilities on the ProStack side, <laughs> we don't think programming in this area. So if you guys can think about that and what are the kinds of things you would like to see happen. Because that'll help us design the space. So what I'm hearing is, regardless of design, assume this is going to be built, no matter what it looks like from the outside. No, just assume. Is. And what if it's going to be built in chance. some fashion? Yeah. What do you want in? What should it have yeah. in it? Right. That's, that's, that's all facility. we need well, to discuss. Exactly. Inside, so, yeah. not, inside, what's indoors? Not, so we've got a yeah, sculpture yet. garden can go. It's right. But no, no, this is indoors. Did you want a sculpture garden indoors? No, I'm talking about outdoors. No, no, no. So that's not relevant. So that will work. Not in here. No, it will work, but outside somewhere. Outside somewhere. This is the discussion inside the building. Yes. So, so I, put right. that on your list for a future outdoor yeah. discussion. Okay, I see right. for, what, so meeting rooms. Okay, space. let's let yes. Marcia. Yeah. Okay, so okay. meeting rooms. So first, yeah. I hear libraries. You know, some people say that's not practical, but I heard that by a few people. Yeah. Meeting rooms. Top have, priority from the survey, so absolutely. And I right, that's some what the form of fashion. Is. And like, would you okay, read from the, Daryl, okay, would you read side from the... You you had a bullet point on the library. Oh yeah, the, the from library the is, a top, study. is a top priority. It is one of the top three priorities for all of the town, and it's a major priority for the multifamily 
um, units that are in town. So okay. in, in some form or fashion, I mean, we pay 200, now it's over $300,000 to the library. So 325, I think. So some library amenity so, is relevant yeah. here. So I'm, I'm just making if a list you agree. and not ranking them at this <laughs> no, point. No, I, I okay. think that. So, so meeting rooms, moving along. Meeting well, rooms. And not just mm -hmm. small no, meeting rooms. Uh, but yeah, we can't, make, we can't say just meeting rooms. We have to say, do we really know. want one of them to be child care? Do we really want one of them to be a senior center? Do we really want one of them to be a, big enough for our CAPS office that could have like temporary monthly exhibits? or poetry readings, or antique well, forget the, on a wall. Marcia, you take your idea of a, of a CAPS office. Yeah. We're not going to have an office, but do, do the second part of your sentence. Do we want a place for art displays? For a revolving display. Think revolving that art displays. Think to the displays. Louisville Library. Right. OK, you walk in the revolving Louisville Library. Displays. Yeah, there's a little gallery. Uh, so it, we're not talking big, but you have a library mm -hmm. where you can actually they bring the books to you or whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody with children and those of us who are readers trek over to Louisville Library all the time. Mm -hmm. It's not a huge deal, but in all honesty, if you're bringing two little toddlers and you're having to trek over to Louisville Library, it's kind of a pain. So I think that you need to have library space and like in the Louisville Library when you walk into it, even the George Reynolds in, in South Boulder, you walk in, you have art space, so you have Debbie, library. Um, Let's key in on, if we had ability to do something in the library arena, and, but we're bound by space, mm -hmm. which we know we're going to be, what would you do first in that library amenity? Would it be adult oriented? Would it be children and uh, young children and parent oriented? Both. But I think libraries are changing shape. Well, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you see it all the time, mm -hmm. and you could literally have books around the whole wall. Exactly. And the senior area over here and mixing those people. I mm -hmm. mean, when we, when we have a teen room and a senior room and we keep them all separate, it's not a community. Mm -hmm. it's so are you, oh, are you proposing an integrated you're, you're teen and that senior? One of the things that you think is important is if we do a teen space or a library space, that there should be a physical book component in there. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. And, and that's... Like yeah. when you walk in the list of library and you see all the amazing kids' art. And the so for example, oh, that's just two rooms. No, well, no, yeah, it, 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 but we're just looking at the ideas. I love cool. uh, Daryl's idea cool. because I hadn't thought of it before. There's interior wall space, so mm -hmm. you could mm -hmm. see can we, uh, can shelves of books and then artwork above oh, them so lining the walls. So can we bring up the rendering of this area? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, Thank perfect. So, okay, so if you were to take it, I don't have much. And this is on the here's outside right. wall. So here is where they have all of the um, the closets. Mm -hmm. and then, but this is a beautiful room. So this could be mm -hmm. kind of the, the, the gathering space with the windows. This is where everyone would want to be. If they made this flush and they put the storage someplace else, this is a beautiful area to display mm -hmm. art. Well, and, mm -hmm. Or books or yeah, cool you know, poofy this, couches that you can move around. Well, there's a whole back group. wall right. here, guys. Yeah. Look at the back wall. Yeah. No, behind the, the oh, okay. back where the fitness area is. So am I? I mean, I so, don't want to think about it in terms of rooms. I want to think about it in terms of, of mm -hmm. concepts because I think the walls are constraining. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Here is, just to help you out a little bit, at the ProStack meeting, which I just sat in the audience and didn't say a word, they want this whole third floor to be community. They want to lose the and that workout, mm -hmm. at whatever, and those offices and, and whatnot, and say no. We want this to be the Superior mm -hmm. Community Center, and the third floor is community space. The second floor is workout. The mm -hmm. first floor is it's aquatics, cool. right? Yeah. Which I, but but that goes back to and you said not to look at the floors, but I still I mean I. I well, what, at that point in the conversation, the third, I didn't want you to be concerned so much by design, but by what you function. wanted this yeah. to accomplish that is a CAPS priority. Right. Well, and uh, so then go to, going back to that on my wish list, I have a performance stage of some sort. Um, uh, Daryl, a performance stage could, um, could, is there 
is there such a thing as a fold up a ball performance oh, stage oh, yeah. that can be stored in one of those closets yeah. and that can be brought out for performances in yeah. this room? Yeah, absolutely. So if okay. you had a band, if you actually, I think it's imperative. If you were going to have a wedding in that room, you'd want a band up a little bit anyway. So some kind of, you know, and again, I think there's so many contemporary things that could, you know, I haven't even gone out onto the internet to explore the possibilities, but I'm sure there are dozens of great, creative, amazing... Well, and that's why we're looking for ideas, because we're, we're looking at designing the space a different way. And so performance stage, that's on the list. Love yes, the idea and, of the library books you know some library around in some of the rooms and I mean, if it's these are not things industrial that... and it's nice then it can be an income producer right so if right. you make it nice if you make that a flush wall if we make it make people it are paying right we, we we're having art a in a week right yeah and it's people a pay a lot area, for people venues will pay them. yeah, pay yeah them. You so we could mm -hmm. make it sandy ways. how many right, people are intended for this room about 200. Okay. That's the one. Yeah, Wait, this yeah. this room when it's open? This room. Oh, this room. Yeah, this the room. These four. Yeah. 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 When all the walls are out, yeah. out. When, so, all, when it's fully open, this should be able to accommodate about 200 people. 200 people sitting in a chair, 200 people on a table, standing. 200. I assume that it's standing. I can't, or I cannot imagine that it's 200 people sitting. Okay. I think it's 160 sitting. If yeah, that's I, what I've seen the numbers okay. for. So, yeah, if you had a stage where you could have story time, you could have that, you know, that folk, I always want to call them Cat and Jack, but that's not who they are. <laughs> so you have Jeff and Page. That's it? Jeff and Page. Jeff and Page, so you have them on a stage where you have people come and they right. can. Yeah, you could have lectures. Um, another Le place lectures. is a, uh, a place where kids can jam or listen to music or mix music, some kind of, I mean, I, it's, it's. Pro Stack. Uh, um, the chair of Postac put together his own little desires, and he had a soundproof music room yeah. for sort of like teenage a bands band or kind of yeah, yeah, and a study room. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and maybe permanent art, um, you know, places where people can, you know, easels are up and there's a still life, and people can come in and sit down. And, oh, cool! Yeah. So know, the kitchen, still the life. wet kitchens were critical. So if you were to have camps. You know, in the community right. room, then you would. Oh, anything. Or Weddings, classes, cooking right. classes. You need to have, right. you have, to have you need to have a catering kitchen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where are the bathrooms? There are bathrooms on every floor. They'll probably have to adjust. I think these are the bathrooms. And I've been paying $2 all across Europe just to go to the bathroom. Yes, yeah. so, but there are bathrooms no, on every floor. No, I'm serious. How important <laughs> is our a our teen bathrooms. amenity? Huge. It's one of the number one priorities on the 2014 survey. A, what? A, what? a teen, some kind a of teen area, center. some oh, space for our kids some to be excited to go to and hang not out. Not that they can study or hang out. Some place that's not a field or an athletic component. I mean, we've had kids come up here and, and ask for a library and study spaces. How um, important is a senior amenity? Well, I get important quick. Yeah. Well, well, here's, here's I, but I think we that the senior make a multi-purpose. Yeah, role. the multi-purpose. I think yeah. senior is, don't think seniors, think someplace where you can go in and have a book group. So it might be 30 years old or it might be 70 years old. But you have some A space, generations room. A genera whatever. Yeah. I mean, you don't need. Or, or a specific corner of the library. Well, right. if this the, is going to be our one shot, then you're going to have to, you're putting a lot of stuff in here. I don't think you need. Like the Louisville Senior Center, if you've not been there, is actually pretty darn cool. Yeah. The East Boulder Rec Center, their senior center is amazing. But if this is our one shot and it's not particularly big, I think you're going to have to kind of conceptually blend senior somehow or, you, you know. You could mix the daycare with the seniors. Exactly, or something. Fact, I think it, I've, yeah. I've seen a lot of studies where they say that um, the seniors with the, the young kids is just a great model. Well, the same thing with teens and seniors. Yeah. Think of seniors using it from 8 a.m. to 3, mm -hmm. and then teens get out of school and use it from 3 p.m. to 8 Like, there's actually a really big Mahjong culture in Superior. Did you guys know that? Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? Anyway. I don't so you have a clue of how to play? Well, but I mean, no, there's, it's there, are, cool. it's kind of becoming sort of a, you know, a really vibrant community of Mahjong. So, you don't have to have a space to do that in seniors, but maybe you just want to know that you can schedule or program 
a cool open space like in here, and you have four tables of mahjong or oh, your clubs. What? Yeah, just club yeah. meeting space. Just club space. meeting space. Um, but community building activities. Community building so it's activities. mahjong this time, and it could be poker it's the camp, next time, right. or clubs, bingo. It's performances. It's weddings. It's, it's lectures, library time. It's lectures. We have amazing people plays, in our community. Yeah. Art, you know, yeah. productions. The quilting and the, but the quilting. But making the, yeah. the design aspects. I think is critical if you're gonna you want to sell this as a wedding space it has to be upscale it, well, and it has to be yeah. upscale and, I think and it has, has to have our, the, the art components yeah the, the non-contemporary look i mean it is just it looks like a big ugly box yeah i mean from well, the remember inside, this was yeah. designed by a sports facility yeah. a sports facility yeah. well and that's why we're sports. asking for your input because yeah. we need your yeah. softer touch mm -hmm. on it to make it but what you we could, want it to be. Well, you here's, could add the sculpture into the... Um, yes, you could have the, the nooks with with pedestals and, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and sculptures. Have, that would be I was thinking as I was listening to Prostec discuss this last night, how, if you want it for weddings and galas, how you get there off the street uh, matters. Mm. You don't want to go into the sweaty yeah. sports center exactly. and then with your... There's cocktail dress on, right? Right. So, so how you enter is important. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, I'm trying to narrow down this this list. I know the discussion is just you know exploding, which is wonderful, um, but it keeps coming up about do we need a catering kitchen and a wedding venue? And I might um, offer for that that for a wedding venue they really want the very best, you know, if it's a once in a lifetime thing, and I don't I think that's going to be too expensive for our space. Plus, um, the space is really, I don't think, big enough, you know, to be practical about trying to attract weddings. Um, I did a rough count, and there's like 50 chairs over here. And if this space from end to end is 200 feet, that means four sets of these chairs. So there's one set. The second chair set would come about here. Third set would come about there. And the fourth set would come before that wall. So in other words, this entire space is smaller than this room. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's bigger than this no, room. No, it's bigger than. Yeah. Well, didn't you just say it was 200 feet? No, no, no. no so 200 just, people. I said it would accommodate 200. It's people. 134 right. feet long. This yeah, this space is 134 feet. So how big is this room? Does anybody have any idea? No idea. I mean, so for visualizing. Okay. okay, then this I'm wrong. Is, this is. Yeah, 24. I think it's double the depth of this room. Yeah. yeah. Just if okay. I so one room is 24, 24, 24, and this one's bigger than 24. Okay. So. All right. See, I was just going to knock yeah. out the idea of a wedding, but of course, a catering kitchen is well, also what you very could, expensive. But what you could say is, uh, this gorgeous room needs to move out more mm -hmm. <laughs> and not be so narrow and rectangular. Yeah. Let's right. move it out 10 more feet. Or and you're getting rid of, we already, right, Sandy, you already said these are gone because they're not community building space. Well, I mean, that's, ProStack's got their opinion on it. Oh. Our opinion would be what to do. We, we can draw okay. this and decide what we want. The thing that bothers me is that, you know, the that what? Yeah, the venue. Well, yeah, the, I don't know about the, well, that wasn't it, but it's more like this, we don't just want this as party space, we want it as our space, you know? So I'd want to have couches and mm -hmm. cool things over here so I could sit and enjoy the view and read my book or whatever, mm -hmm. so. Or you have a group of kids who want to study, so they're, they're in that corner over there and they're doing, you know, some kind of a research or group project over in that corner and over in this corner, you might actually have you know, a, a mod moms group or something that is doing whatever it might be. I mean, you can use that space, and it looks like they designed in these walls. Is that why those dividers are there? Yeah. And but community room. I mean, it's meeting space is a top priority. A hundred and sixty person room like this was not as high a priority if, in the day. So you're basically saying this is fine. But it's got to be designed and furnished in such a manner that you can use this every day of the week. Right. It's not vacant yeah, when so there's you not can, a you wedding can roll or out couches or whatever. And oh, absolutely. different things so that it's not just yeah. a, a, a big empty room when we're not having weddings. So like my barbecue grill, put them on rollers and break them in. You put the brakes on and they don't yeah. move. 
but when you gotta scoot them, you can scoot them somewhere. Well, this room probably is up, what, 30 feet by 50 feet maybe? Because those windows are four feet. Yeah, something like that. I mean, so, I so 30 by 50, let's say, maybe okay. 30 by 60. Mm -hmm. So if you knew that you wanted to include, you know, all these different gathering community, incorporating art, basically you have two rooms this size. Am I right about that? Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a space kind of thing? How deep are you? How, how, so how deep? Are you? This way. Uh, they're about 30 feet, but well, 24 feet with the closets are in the way, so they're like 24 by 24, yeah. kind of. It's pretty small. Yeah, they're kind of. I mean, but but not for a classroom. I mean, if you want. As long as the dividers are soundproof. Well, that's what, yeah, mm -hmm. right, Colin yeah. and I were mentioning that, that they, just to have dividers isn't useful if it can't be, you can't have the Girl Scouts on one side and well, a book we found club that on the other side. The, sports the sports table, table. community mm -hmm. room with the hockey games going on, right. we've got a screen in there. Yeah. Is that a money issue? I mean, are, are there, are there no, levels of soundproof? We don't care if it's a mini issue. Well, this is what we want to mm -hmm. see. But are there soundproof levels of walls, soundproofing that's better? Dividing walls in the, in the thing. I'm sure, I, yeah. I mean, but that, I, I mean, think, think about that. this. Like, if you're in some place that has to be really quiet, like a hospital or something, they've got to have ways to make really effective soundproof walls. Right. Uh, yeah, well, they do it walls. in hotels exactly. all the time. All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, we should the issue looking. is that you want it to be soundproof. Exactly. Right. Yeah, otherwise exactly. dividing these rooms is yeah. has no positive impact. But you still need a space, what, what this might look like, that looks warm and inviting and gathering, whoever that group might be. And so it is a thing to write on somebody's list that this needs to be, is the word, amenitized in a upscale fashion. Mm -hmm. So that it is, in fact, a place people want to have mm -hmm. their lectures or their presentations or their wedding or their whatever. And I think weddings are, by the way, down here. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think that's the lowest <laughs> right. priority. That's, that's, I mean, right. that's, to me, that's irrelevant. That right. if you want to have your wedding in that space, then you're going to accommodate that it's gonna wedding be a reception. Wedding. Whatever. Well, I see, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I see yeah. chamber. I see chamber events. Exactly. Yeah. You know, right. after yeah. hours and things like that. Well, and so here is a um, awesome. thing that also dawned on me just listening. If you have yoga and uh, some other exercise class in here, and it's got carpet on the floor, it's going to get smelly. So, you know, so, if, so it, if this yeah, I don't think yeah. this this is not exercise. I mean, I know yeah. like my daughter who lives in Superior. She belongs to both Lifetime and has been doing classes at Impact. She only does one thing at Impact because she would never take a shower there. You know, it's just, it's a special class that she wants to take. I don't look at this as exercise. This is community. Yeah, it is community like meeting space with using some It art, may still literature. be relevant to say that if another version wins out to where this might be repurposed, I, it's, one of these rooms may be yoga while the other one is, um, a book club, mm -hmm. well, whatever. Uh, it, the bottom line is I hope the flooring is such that it stays unsmelly and undirty no matter what use is made of it. Well, lifetime in the yoga classes, classes, you have your there. mats. I'm not. I mean, good. <laughs> yeah, lifetime is wood floors in the yoga rooms. You bring your own mat. Right. Yeah. All right, so are there amenities that anybody is thinking about that we haven't talked about that we'd love to see in I can come up with really cool ideas one thing I'm thinking if there's gonna be that many people using it in all those different ways should there be some type of food service um, oh like a cafe. cafe yeah because people are gonna to want to eat if they're gonna be hanging out here for hours could they go to Brunelleschi but they could if they could get in yeah. or what about like especially with the pool sometimes you want to go and maybe just get some fast casual snacks like mm -hmm. a little snack bar. Some snack yeah. bar type of thing, because teens, they want to eat, you know. Right. Well, we, it's, it's not like we don't have, I mean, ultimately, we're going to have a whole street right. of restaurants and things. So right. think about your right space and that you have limited space. Yeah. Is that something that will be served in other ways? You can well, still go down the stairs. Like I think it's important. Packaged sandwiches yeah. and chips if, and fruit. If a high priority for us is to have a teen and a senior space you know, together with yeah. little you know, nooks that are inviting for them to have meetings, they've got to have some coffee and water and, and you know, 
a vending machine of something. You can't expect them to walk out across yeah. the street and go find a restaurant. And I think and that, that can be included in the catering kitchen. You can just have like a little kitchen. What do they do at the Lafayette Library? Because you know they have they have a cafe. And in Louisville, they don't have food or drink. No, no, but the Boulder like the Boulder and Library Lafayette does, does too. Yeah. Boulder, mm -hmm. but that cafe there has gone in and out, uh, depending on that that person who ran it. That the Lafayette, yeah, I think, I as think you walk the, in the front door, it's on the left well, we're, side. We're the we're putting our wishes the problem. Right. We've got to have wishes. you know a, a space that's got these amen we'll amen amenities provided, sure. but doesn't require an employee. <laughs> well, I know. Name yeah. I just think they have to. Well, Styx is right there too. They get a lot of their uh, stuff from Spruce Confections. They don't make it on site. They get it from somebody who delivers it, I presume. If I, like, when I take my kids to the Apex or something, you know, they get hungry, like, I guess you can bring food in, but it's, it would be I more ideal for me if you could buy healthy-ish snacks there, you know. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we have a lot more to get to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do. I, I only have one, and from Sandy, from a ProSAC perspective, so if, if the Board of Trustees in ProSAC is saying to the CAPS committee, we have these things that are important to us. How do how do we as a committee convey to them all these uses and how that in this limited space, this design person, not sports table, I mean some creative person could come up with a way to use this as a community gathering space and, and do the trustees and ProSAC, are they willing to pay Twenty-five thousand dollars to someone to say in a creative way, like you would see. We have a design consultant that that Patrick, Patrick is actually talking. There's with. a budget, and, and yeah. there's a budget, and that's that's part of why we're you know, and all the things you guys have said tonight. I'm going to relay them to Patrick and say, and Katie will too. Mm -hmm. These are the things we heard tonight. Let's make sure we try and factor these in because. Well, I'm going to see three. a completely different design, and yeah. we are also on ProStack relying heavily on that survey because Good. we do have a limited space, mm -hmm. and so how do we try and address as many of the issues? Because the reality <laughs> is if we want to get the voters to approve it, mm -hmm. right. we've got to try and incorporate as many of the elements as we reasonably can. That know? are important to them. Yeah. And they say, oh. This is really cool, and I love the way they've done right. and incorporated stuff. So, yes, they they, they listen, yeah. and I'm okay them increasing my tax mill levy by whatever it might right. be because I can go over and have my book group here, or I can have my, you know, mom and tots reading group, you know, or whatever in this space, and that's really important to me. Yeah. And if okay. you follow the survey, I would encourage so everybody you to go out and look at that survey because you guys are going to look at it from a different eye than Prostec did. And so key in on some of the things, or if you saw the data go a certain way, say, you know, this really means this, and and help shape this, mm -hmm. um, because it's it's still relatively a blank slate. But what is the possibility of it being in a different location since it essentially is a standalone and is not part of Impact Sports and Sports Stable? Um, we I still would, have the Richmond 15. We still own the Richmond 15. That? That's down at the corner McCaslin. of Colton and oh, yeah. McCaslin. Um, obviously, a standalone facility is going to be considerably more expensive. But at one point, we were talking about a $7 million building. Now, you know, this right. design that we saw was in the 17 to 18 million. The standalone was in the 28 to 30 right. range. So we're up so to 20 already. Yeah, it's not saying it won't happen. Um, but, you know, you can watch the trustees meeting. We tend to have a lot of 4-3 votes. I'm and going so to... Uh, we I... want to try and make this look as much like what... If it's going to be built, and it could be, let's... You know, we want to hear from you. Let's try and solve as many of the problems as we can. We still have <coughs> other space. And if you think this is the dumbest idea on the face of the planet, then we also so want to Sandy, a, a full-fledged standalone from the ground up budget at one point was t spoken to us at 28. 28 million. So, if we're at 20... With this, and we've got it all on the third floor, 
which is not ideal. Then all of a sudden, as a trustee, I can tell you that is going to be discussed. I mean, it's not me. all on the third floor. The, the full-blown amenity has all these things. But it has the, the pool and the stuff. Community but the community part of it. aspect so is on one floor. Mom schlepping your kid up to the third floor every time you want to go to the library or... Um, Don't know. disagree. The Richmond 15, or now the town 15, is 15 acres. And what is this little parcel? I don't remember what this is. A quarter of an acre? Yeah, even that. Uh, eighth <laughs> of an acre? What are you going to so the reason it was designed this way, it, was there a strong demand expressed for more exercise space in town? There actually was a the highest request yeah. of our citizens in the 2014 surveys, survey was for indoor recreation space and weight rooms. Really? It was. It was that, that's Even why I really that, want you to go have out. The sports team will build now. But and so it, it seems a little silly to put sports exercise yeah, but right they, next to the exercise. But people did have other options. So yeah. I just think you need to go out and look at it and remember that there are folks who don't want to go outside of town or they want that subsidized rate. Yeah. Right. So but then I, we also have you know, roughly 1,800 citizens who live in apartments or multifamily communities. And as Daryl pointed out very strongly, those people don't exercise. give a crud no. about this. The top well, thing on so the list was a As a trustee, that's yeah. what I asked at the last meeting. Yeah. This must analyze, from a financial perspective, choices mm -hmm. out there. Lifetime is now up and running and it's a spectacular facility and it is jammed mm, that's true. all the Isn't time. Isn't bizarre? Who would have thought? And, and there, it's not cheap. It it's no, not. it's however much for a single but 159 for a couple. Well my daughter right. who's with you know her and her husband and three kids is like 300 a month. Mm. And then so late, uh, uh, Louisville Rack <laughs> is put, bringing a fantastic amenity online the and they've got a yeah. discounted community-based yeah. fee over there already and oh by the way you can belong to impact for i believe like Pretty 40 cheap, bucks right? a month or it's something cheap. like that yeah, yeah. so, uh, you not so want this, like, would it hurt their business? when you're doing no they need more space they that's the problem they don't have enough space for their recreation program so that was part of the reason that they helped design great. this but is they wanted the additional workout the space. The political decision space. there is, yeah. so you need more space. That's not the town's yeah. responsibility or the town's issue, et cetera. But how this partnership initially morphed was they needed something. And oh, by the way, we wanted something. And so we said, well, could we do this jointly and you benefit and we benefit, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and then it, now it's further morphed to say, well, but what if we do it and then you lease some of our amenity when you need it, that kind of thing. So <laughs> it is in a constant stage of evolution, state of evolution. How does our $325,000 that we're paying to the Louisville Library, how's that impacted or how much of that, if any, can be pulled away from? 100%. So, we just have to give them a minimum amount of notice. But I mean, but if, if we completely sever the relationship with the, the Louisville Library, we would have to fund our own, somehow or another, whatever that system right. is. You'd have to get the books, the magazines, the computers, you know. I mean, but I, I don't think severing, I mean, personally, I think that I don't, we need to, I, I, most libraries have, a main library and branch library. Well, think about the way North Boulder. Yeah, I think that this is more a branch library. It will be a branch library. Kind of okay. thing. And, and libraries are constantly changing. I mean, that's the beauty. I mean, the, they can be so amazingly progressive. I mean, books are cool and great, but we are looking at the maker spaces and other oh, things absolutely. as well. But I, I think um, I want to bring it back around to this just for a minute to see if there's any other thoughts and ideas. I know outside architecture is appalling. Um, uh, Thank you for saying <laughs> that. <laughs> no, I, I am, I am shocked. Creating little alleyways. I, I am shocked at how unattractive it is. Oh, I, I'm, I, but again, like remember, this is oh, no, we, we, yeah, yeah, not a sports say, stable, people. I'm going to yeah. say, if this yeah, is ours, we don't want yeah. it to look like this. Okay, good. 
I mean, I think people would just look at that and go, what in the heck were they thinking? Yeah. And okay. I think let's put our thinking caps on about what we would love to see in that space and assume that that might be the only community space that we have the opportunity to deal with in the near future. Can we share, like, and get nine members of the CAPS committee over the next two weeks or whatever to go on Pinterest sites or whatever community spaces and say, okay, I found this one, it's really sure, cool. absolutely. 17,000 square feet and this is what they're doing so that we can kind of, you know, when we're looking at sculptures, same thing, going back and forth and looking at 17,000 square feet and how other communities have taken and designed that. Sure. So I, I mean, my, my problem other. is, you know, May is a horrible month. It's really busy, and there's all kinds of meetings already that I, I, I'm really disappointed that we have to rush once again something. I agree. And I'm, I, I'm fearful that we will end up with... Um, I think yeah. that can be stated. I, I think, I, think it should, I mean, I, I'm totally surprised. I mean, I've lived here for eight and a half years, and you've been talking about rec centers forever, and now all of a sudden it's you have to decide. <laughs> I know. It's like Two we're months? on the defense again. Oh, yeah, you're like, what happened to that vision of community space, and this is what we're going to have it look like, and do we want a library? I mean, I mean, I think, I think to, to they were, there was uh, momentum from Sports Stable and Impact Sports. And that's kind of what started it. That kind of kick-started it, and it's, it's exciting, and it's, it's thrilling. But at the same time, we don't want it to be, you know, if we're going to spend $20 million, you know, let's let's have it be something that we really want and that's amazing and not just, you know. Otherwise it won't pass. I wouldn't vote for it if it doesn't make existing. Just more <laughs> exercise. Right. I, yeah, right. yeah I, I, I would strongly campaign for whatever. If it was on the ballot in November and it was just exercise space. I mean, I, even with young parents and people, I, I think I don't think it would pass. No. Well, and I think so. Let's all, all um, think about it. Read um, some of the survey data. It's actually very interesting, and um, I think it's important in terms of you know what what our needs are and what our wants and desires are for indoor space. And if we can communicate it to the four people who aren't here and yeah, start thinking well, about we it. can we can. Well, I think what. What's important to understand is they're going to come up with some designs, and then there is going to be a public engagement process where everybody has the opportunity to come in and say, you know, this is horrible. We don't want to spend our, t you know, just a good public point. engagement on it. So we're not going to put it on the ballot if we start hearing craziness, you know, that uh, everybody in the town thinks we're insane for doing this. So I, I think that's you're a good, good point. Yeah. But um, so online, there is an agenda for the timeline to get this moving forward and the community engagement component and um, the dates, the deliverables that have to be met in order to make the ballot. And this is interesting. Look at September 8th. Booth at Chili Fest to gather support. Uh, that can't happen. Exactly. That can't, that that's, can't happen. That, I mean, it actually cannot happen because once it goes on the ballot, all we can do As is get... Yeah, the elected no. officials can do but, you know, Patrick put this schedule oh, together okay. before he'd had an opportunity to consult with the town attorney. Okay. Because to me, that's all Because we've never done like this. Okay. And the so... The town and elected officials, after the decisions yeah. made to put it on the ballot, has to be neutral. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys can have any opinion you want. You guys As can private have, citizens. Yeah. But you private could not do it as a cast member. Yeah. So don't wear your cap that day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't wear your okay. cap. All right, any other thoughts, ideas? Thank you all very space? much. So and continue to, to send our idea, ideas. Okay. So we're, we're Thank you, Sandy. For I, think so. huh? I think so. Are you going to stay for the rest of the excitement? Karen, are you no. leaving us? Karen's like, oh my go gosh, that's the time. She's like, trial by fire. I'm going to go talk about the Thank you. Very nice to meet you all. Thank you. Okay, um, on to another area of town. The Northwest Area Plan, um, there are community meetings next week on the 21st and the 23rd one. None of them are in the Northwest Area. <clears throat> um, one is over at the sports table and one is at the firehouse. Um, but Claire, um, do you want to talk a little bit about your thoughts on the Northwest? Is everybody familiar with the Northwest Area Plan and what that is? Well, I'm not familiar with every single parcel. I know we're talking about original town. It's a, um, it's, Katie, can you pull up a map of yeah. it? It's a, it's a pretty 
It's, it's, it's basically west of McCaslin in this north. This well, Superior Marketplace and Original Town. And behind, so uh, behind Costco where Guardian Storage is. Okay. Um, Sagamore is within that um, area. And there was huge, I mean, there was 600 people. There's a, there's I mean, that attended all the right. meetings and did the surveys and stuff. Yeah. So really there's, there's already a lot of feedback. There's right? all a lot of feedback and a lot of community involvement. I have some opinion about this. We, I mean, we talked about it the other day. Yeah, this is kind of jump yeah. starting off yeah. of well, what you, you had started. Yeah, okay. so you want to give us yeah. a little sure. rundown okay. on what you're... So this thing, this thing totally threw me for a loop because the way I was thinking was like not along these lines at all. But, um, you know, we had kind of like generated this idea at our last meeting of building art and art space in this area mm -hmm. because this is this is our historic district, mm -hmm. right? This so, is the heart of Superior. Right, creating somehow, I don't know, I've never done this, but creating some type of arts and historical district in the original town area and incorporating that with some, maybe some of the edges of Superior Marketplace, because mm -hmm. I did read over a lot of the comments on that survey. I think um, people want like a walkable space, and I love that idea, and there's some kind of cool like old buildings over here and empty lots where we could build mm -hmm prettier architecture, you know, for places, for a gallery and a maker space, and also maybe a pavilion at the park for a farmer's market. So people could come to this space and walk around and go to a few things, and then maybe that would, everyone's mad because we don't have great eating options over here. People aren't walking around Superior Market Place. It's not pedestrian friendly. But maybe if there were reasons for people to come mm -hmm. on the weekend. Um, or stay around if they're going to and Costco. And stay around and walk around and go to the farmer's market mm -hmm. and go to the community garden and see what's at the gallery. Um, then maybe, you know, cafes would pop up over there, some cute, interesting cafes where people would also buy food, and it would just be more of that space, but more of an outdoor, <coughs> outdoor space. Oh my god, yeah. So, I thought that was a brilliant idea. Yeah. And Daryl and I took it off to another level. Okay. Taking your idea and trying to make this a designated arts district, yeah. right, which would give us grants. Yeah. So. Um, and I love that idea. So because we're going to have the uh, the creek, right, it's going to be, oh, yeah. um, you know, a beautiful aspect. It's going to bring people here into this incredible historic park. Mm -hmm. and, and this is our dream, right? So if we're going to yeah. dream, this area will become, we talked about an event center. Uh -huh. pull up the map. We could modify this to be the event center, which would look out over that historic park. And then what if we had that, we had like a, a cute little crosswalk saying this way, walking through Original Town, Town going over to that park, making mm -hmm. that the sculpture garden, yeah. and then that would bring economic vitality to that part of the Superior yeah. Marketplace because people would want to walk. We're having an event here, mm -hmm. and we're making no, it a cute. Back up two walk. sentences. Where are you putting? You mean not in this building? Yeah, no, no this we, building. Because town hall, we need a new town, right? Oh, like one day we're gonna have our own town <coughs> hall, right? Okay. But what well, if, there was a. But what if this was with the North North Superior? Right. 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 This was right. the event center. I mean, and an original <laughs> town, where yeah. it yeah. should yeah. be, mm -hmm. and we're it right on the creek. Yeah. yeah, but there the was before. Yeah. And we had the original that one meeting. Woman. Yeah. 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 And then that one woman, Marianne. No, what's the one we're talking about? Underground. Like, under, but like the crosswalk, like you would have a map saying walk this way, and you mm -hmm. walk from this from your event from original town. You know, you walk down the street, you get to walk by the cute painted building, mm -hmm. and then you walk through Asti Park, and that's where we have a sculpture garden. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then so, and you've made this a pedestrian right. friendly, walkable wanted place and then I think that is what's going to bring vitality to the Super economic market. to superior marketplace yeah we were talking about making original town the arts district and bringing the events here bringing the school right, bringing, park yeah because there making bringing the farmers right. market there mm -hmm. and then I think and then in and then with the Northwest corridor they're talking about rerouting um, this and that so is are you saying that, because we've had some of these discussions already in downtown Superior, are you saying that is instead or in addition? Well, we don't see it happening in downtown Superior anytime soon. Right. You know, and the reality is, 
the superior marketplace, they're looking to revitalize. And mm -hmm. if you become an arts district, monies become available, people come over, they to open up studios or a gallery, and areas can get revitalized. There's the 2016 plan that was already done, and that brings it to more pedestrian friendly mm -hmm. over there. Um, and it just, it, if we sit around and wait for downtown superior, it years, right? Right. It's yeah. it's a long time in coming, and Plus, yeah. So I mean, and and I'm biased because I didn't realize all the potential and the cool stuff that you have, the ability to do from McCaslin going all the way west and stuff. I mean, again, Fifth Avenue, why not do something really cool with that? I mean, it could be a boulevard with sculpture. You know, there's just there's right. So well, much I, what we were thinking, I think, if you are designated as an arts district, I think we would have a higher probability of getting grants if we pull in the historic components, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think its success is going to be better, you know, in make in getting the designation if we, if we use the history to our advantage because we have it, you know, and so. Yeah. So like that barn down there. Yeah. I mean, Bob, um, Bob was telling me, Daryl's husband, that was a school. Oh, house. that was a schoolhouse. Isn't that it cute? is the cutest so, thing. I mean, Please. No, so no, I know no. it belongs to a private citizen right now, but maybe we could just work on it or put the idea in there. Like that would be the cutest. I thought that was an idea. It, it, it's unfortunately tied into a family trust. Well, yeah, I know, but <laughs> but still, if if at some point in time, could just express interest. Express interest in it, and I know there's all these interesting other aspects to that. But you're right, if the town said, okay, you have this historic schoolhouse, what if we took that, like the one in Breckenridge, for instance, and I know people are probably going, you're gonna do what? But you take and you move the schoolhouse to Asti Park, or you move it over here, or something where you really can have that green schoolhouse restored as, yeah. you know, an art building, sculpture. I mean, there's just, there's so many potential things that we could do in the Northwest Corridor that would not involve working around Ranch Capital and all this other kind of stuff that's going on that maybe, is that possible? I mean, or is that like a total pipe dream that if we're, only, if we're working with Northwest Superior and, and we have kind of our, a vision that will be developed, that's well, actually more doable than trying to do something in Well, downtown. I think in the Northwest Corridor, they're trying to bring in higher density right along the 36 in this bus area. There, yeah, the That's BRT. There, they, right. There is a proposal potentially to put some housing over in that area. Um, and that was... Apartments that, or townhouses. Mm -hmm, yeah, more apartment style things <laughs> because you're right off of 36. And so the idea is that you wouldn't need cars. And so, oh. but, but as you've stated, Superior Marketplace isn't really walkable. Yeah. And right. So they so have. There is a. Walkable. There was a survey, and we can pull it up and look at it. Or not a survey, but a study that was done. They, they actually um, interviewed uh, stakeholders and talked about things that they could do. They talked about realigning Marshall Road, mm -hmm. so that it's actually much more functional, oh. um, and then changing some of the building scope so that it is more pedestrian friendly. Yeah. And, but there's already and such I, a huge population over here already. I mean, there's original what, town. And what's the impetus for putting and more housing in there? Is it tax dollars or what? Um, bus. Uh, connection to the bus. Connection to, yeah, tax dollars. I mean, the more bodies you have, the more tax revenue you have. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, part of it is that it's it's part of an urban area. You know, you put housing right near bus. And, and more people will walk around there and go to Whole Foods or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, because yes. if you think about Superior Marketplace, you, you really can't, okay, so you take your kids to the new music school, which is starting to catch on and do well, and hopefully it will continue because that's those, those four academically inclined businesses right there, kind of are, it, it, I mean, it's great that they're clustered together right there. Hopefully they will stay strong and they succeed, but you really can't walk from the preschool, you know, superior learning camp, you know, easily because it's just all parking lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's so not walkable friendly right. it's not there's and, and if you drop your child off at the music store or whatever there's no place even to have lunch other than yeah, Wayne's that's true I mean there's just walk all over there. right so would bringing an arts district to original town help 
right? So, so. You, we make it walkable. We put this, you know, yeah. we get uh, some grants, we get yeah. some more sculptures, and then that brings more pedestrians potentially, yeah. and then that's going to bring maybe more restaurants for. Um, but well, but it, night, do you get a grant? Night right, there's night exactly. There's night we put the farmers the market there. over there. Yeah. But will you get grants with part. Superior Marketplace being a commercial entity versus trying to focus more but, on this, well, this? But a district is an overlay, and I don't. I, I mean, I. I so I, it, you can. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I think so. I was doing research on small towns trying to revitalize Main Street, right? Yeah. Like an ideal Main Street. You still have existing buildings and businesses there, but but yeah. they created an yeah. arts district and tried to bring in the walkability, pedestrian-friendly components, and then that brought people to the area. Mm -hmm. Build it and the they will come. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, and the gentleman that's painting the house over here, his vision actually is to that to be a little gallery. See, that'd be cool. If there, there could be multiple little galleries, and then you have art walks, right. you know? So I like but I think the important thing is that we want to, it sounds like we want to go to the meetings and participate and in the meetings. And, 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 and yeah. the vision from us as a CAPS collective is that um, perhaps an overlay of an art district, whether it's... Yeah just in the historic section here, or whether it expands over to the marketplace. Yeah. I mean, the marketplace has buildings and spaces for the art galleries and things like that, and that's where... Um, why, why did they decide in the old sports authority not to have it as a co-working? Well, isn't there a reason that they decided not to? Because, you know, to have a co-working space? For what? Offices. You know, um, well, there's no tax revenue if it's an office. Oh, so that's why they did not want sports. Well, we don't, we don't own the space. Yeah. Bricksmore owns the space. Okay. And well, they manage it. I think Legend, somebody else owns it. Okay. But you know, they, they want to put somebody in there that's going to pay them rent. Yeah. And they don't want to divide it. They want, <laughs> you one, know, they want one. One big. Thing. Well, they actually, they will take two. Oh, but the they problem have is the they haven't been able to locate. Two, at, the, at the same time, they can find somebody who wants, and then part of it, and then they walk away. Yeah. Well, I, can, uh, I mean, Office Evolution, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of those. There's one right downtown Pearl Street in Boulder that's, mm -hmm. you have to wait like three weeks to just to rent the space to have a conference mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah, but those and, are private uh, things and something. Oh, so you can't. Yeah. I mean, you so, could work with them to do it. I'm but. thinking, like, this space really makes sense for a lot of things we were talking about, gathering spaces for different various groups and book clubs and Girl Scouts and Mom Bombs and all of that. But I don't I don't think it makes sense. In my mind, it doesn't make sense to be an art gallery. Cause no, it it's doesn't. A workout, like, no, so I think, yeah. exactly. So I think if we were to separate ourselves, right, this would yeah. be a great community. Yeah. Well, you can bring your sculpture into our park. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I still yeah. Need, I need to put in a pitch for having art in this space because this is something like could that could, could happen like next year. Right. The, the district just, that you're talking about down here is oh, really totally. a long term plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it'd be lovely to have at least our toes in this and walls. Walls. right up front. Exactly. Just, yeah. And then as, yeah. as this develops over here, surrender that space. That's mm -hmm. easy to do. Yeah, exactly. But the problem is it's hard to get it in the beginning. Yeah, yeah I agree. I think so, every yeah. available wall space should have art on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, art and books. Not or, or something, yeah. Or, yeah. or a mural, you know, some Murals. space for creativity, mm -hmm. you inspiration. Know. Um, yeah. But it's exciting, uh, you know, mm -hmm. thinking about a place or a destination where people yes, gather. making original town a destination. Mm -hmm. You know, capitalizing on the history yeah. and. Uh, and and it's walkability. I mean, it really is just what three blocks to well, get over to. And then the connectivity that. over to downtown Superior in yeah, the underground exactly. right there. Yeah, exactly. Connecting, making it to the big new park, and down the so the creek you corridor. You could spend all day in this. Mm -hmm. And just you just yeah. build ground. You paint groundhogs as you're walking. <laughs> on the, seriously, right? Follow the prairie dog. Follow the, for the prairie dog. Follow the prairie dog. And that's where like go on our walk. Follow the prairie dog walk. Yeah. And we we'll take yeah. you. Along the I street. love the idea of the painted prairie dog. That's still yeah. one of my favorite. Past the cute house, the gallery, mm -hmm. and to Asti Park, mm -hmm. our sculpture garden, and then, oh, by the way, there's a farmer's market today, and mm -hmm. have lunch at school barn. And it ties right into art and culture. 
So um, are people able to go to either the 21st or the 23rd meeting? I'm going, there's a business owner's one at, oh, okay. at noon on the 21st. I'm going to go to that, okay. and I may attend others as well. I know a bunch of people from my neighborhood are going. Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, I, I think pretty mean much as everybody as attended. We, as others. individuals, we can go, but yeah. also as cats, just oh, thinking okay. about planting that seed of art district. Do you know yeah, how these meetings anything. are going to be formatted? Is it like this, where you get up on a microphone and say something? Twenty first, I can't go. I assume they will time. have people have to go to a microphone. Yeah. Yeah. The twenty first yeah. and twenty third. I don't think so. Know how they're but that's yeah. I would love to do the twenty third. It's the interactive. The crowds. Yes. I'm there. I don't really know what they're doing. Okay. So then I think another advantage, I love that like we're all kind of in agreement here. The um, you know, the look of this building building is just like really bland, you know. And over here we could do some more little unique, cute, yeah. fun things. Totally. So that was great. That was the idea. Sounds like we all like Um that. wait, we talked about Do we need to have Kurt. a subcommittee? Well, I think I think well, I don't know until you told me today they totally canceled the June 9th thing. I mean, oh really? Okay. Oh, yeah. They canceled it. Mm -mm. Well, it's I postponed. I kind of wonder if it would be a better I word. Didn't they just postpone it? I'm glad they did. That's the plan. Yeah. Oh, postponed June. I think. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. We, we really yeah. didn't have enough time, and honestly, yeah. I wanted. Yeah. You know, the vision would be more local stuff, and they're in Denver, and the reality is in that short amount of time and all of that kind of stuff. It just wouldn't have been done well. Be. Yeah. Um, so I think I think postponement. So how does that tie in with the June 29th, number six? Well, so agenda? Melinda and I were sitting around, and thankfully we weren't actually, um, we were just talking, but because we have that $5,000 and some of it we've already spent because we, we went to the, um, the summit, um, there's some money left over. We just thought it might be fun to do something. I mean, we just, you know, we, we don't have a community or uh, a, something that's ours to um, be responsible for. But I did notice, though, that um, Jeff and Paige are going to be a wildflower on the 22nd, so the 29th might not be the best. <laughs> oh, are they? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm um, glad you checked that date because I knew it was sometime in June, but I wasn't it's sure. It's the 22nd, it but we just love the idea of, you know, uh, like maybe an open mic night and you get local kids to oh, sign cute. up and just have, you know, a food truck and um, music and just, a, you know, an a, event without a lot of fanfare and stuff um, in the park. You know, yeah. last year we did the block party parties in the bark concept. I think we kind of, as a committee, and, and it was a fair amount of work. Yeah. I mean, it, it really was. Yeah. Um, I think we need to have kind of a path. I mean, I liked the idea of the block parties or whatever you want to call it, but keeping kind of some continuity with, again, community building. You could do art and music or whatever that is, but not be so random because I mean it was a lot of work last year and we did it once and there were maybe what 400 people at six parks or whatever it was no, I think it was, I think they were very successful uh, no I think it was very successful but, but we, so are you saying you don't, no. you don't like the idea of oh, like a pop-up event well or I like it but I mean I think that we started something last year and we did it once and it was oh, really pretty successful then okay but now we're going to do this at Wildflower Park? And no, we were so. going to do, so it morphed into the main event. The idea was at the block parties. And then, right, and then it went to the main event and there. that didn't happen and so now. I, I agree with you, but I also feel that it's important to, it, it's almost kind of fun to have these spontaneous events to say, hey, and we're around until, until we really get into our groove. Yeah. Of um, what we're doing for community and, events. Yeah, and this would be, <laughs> super cheap, <coughs> right, just to get one food truck and then we just borrow the town equipment and plug it in and, you know, give the mic to Daryl. I mean, <laughs> karaoke night. Yeah, karaoke yeah, night. So I think fun. it's, um, it would yeah. be something we'll cheap and, and fun and yeah. people would say, oh, that, oh, you know, just to keep us in the mix a little bit, I suppose, because we're not having the main event. Because I think the continuity having the main event is huge yeah. and we're not there yet. Uh, yeah, I agree. 
I just would like to see, I mean, Chili Fest is so successful, Fort July is so successful. Um, yeah. Yeah, but we're not, we don't want, I mean, I think the idea too is the block parties were smaller, more intimate things, mm -hmm. and that would be a pop-up. A pop-up is smaller, more intimate. I mean, I, honestly, Chili Fest is 10,000 people. We don't well, right, want 10,000 I mean, person. You want, you want someone thing. who's in Superior to think, oh, it's Friday night or whatever, Saturday night, and they're having this event over here. I can, as a Superior resident, go and do this or a block party, well, I mean, whatever it might be. Um, even like the holiday thing, which is pretty cool. The, you know, the winter lights thing. I'm just, I'm just concerned that you're too scattershot doing, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I think it's, I'm just concerned it's too scattershot. And we put so much work into it last year and we kind of abandoned that idea that was going to move. Well, I don't know that it's abandoned, but we moved it into the main event yeah, and, and that's not happening. So we could pick up the block party thing again. I mean, mm -hmm. the idea was we created the, the branding and the signage and we could potentially do that. Why can this not be viewed as sort of an extension of that party in the park thing? Well, it, it, because I, I mean, if it's a pop-up in the park, mm -hmm. It's a party Can this in the just park. be a party in the park, and this time it's a pop-up? Version two, and it's yeah, yeah. yeah. point yeah. two. Yeah. Version two. So two. It's, it's a pop-up. Yeah, yeah. Pop -up and uh, what my concern more so is, I think it will be wildly popular at Wildflower Park, and that you might need a couple of food trucks, or there's going to be. Uh, a well, long, the, long line. And the idea of a pop-up, though, is it's not heavily advertised. It is more, you know, word of mouth, what people see. They're like, oh, hey, what's going on over there? And then they stop it. Would the music be amplified? Yeah, absolutely. So, right toward yeah. your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. No, no, that's what I meant. Yeah. I love all the kid noise and all that kind of stuff, but I'm saying that other people, <laughs> more fuddy-duddy than more moi, fuddy -duddy. <laughs> might wish to be prior noticed in case oh, they're... Well, the neighbors obviously would yeah, be yeah, notified. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying okay. it's not... Right. And I'm just spitballing here, too. I mean, yeah. we were just... Well, that. I would love, I thought maybe my son and daughter-in-law were going to be the first wedding there, but that's not happening. It's in Kauai. So I would love to see that um, park uh, energized with any sort of dancing or music concert, et cetera, yeah, I, because I that's, the that's the vision of that great lawn is bring your lawn chair and do something fun on it, right? Well, we always keep throwing out the line dancing, too. It doesn't have to be, you know, but again, we were just throwing out an idea, so it could be a pop-up like line dance. So what, so who is sponsoring the June 22nd event? OSAC. The, um, oh, OSAC. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, <laughs> they've done it for the past couple of years, because Jeff and Paige are, their whole spiel is environment and mm -hmm. getting mm -hmm. outdoors and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's great. That was a perfect pairing for them. Well, they're super popular. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're really... You know, I think it's two very, very well, well attended. Yeah. Well, they're, yeah. And didn't they do it at Wildfire last they year? They did it at Wildfire okay. yeah, last so year. So that did. was sort of a concert already. Mm -hmm. I missed it. Right, and that's why that I think down? the 29th is not an appropriate date because they're just going to have had... Um, Jeff and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right before Fourth of July. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Fourth of July is so popular. So maybe end, end of July. <laughs> yeah, end of July. Well, you all get to do it because I'm not here in July. Yeah. Where are you going in July? Uh, Vermont. <laughs> um, okay, so what do you guys, uh, just a head nod, do people like the idea of the pop up? Do we want to pursue it? I, um, yes. Okay. I like it. I like it. Who pays for it? Is we that do. We have, have the five thousand. We have okay. the five thousand or the leftover. Yeah. And do the end of July. Um, we don't want professional musicians. It's just going to be like we could or just have a few in case. We could. I could also see like um, Global Sound Studio. They have the rock bands, and they um, will come and do a two-hour. Um, they do it in Broadlands all the time. They do a neighborhood. They set up a little mm -hmm. stage, and the bands come and go and they have food trucks and the neighbors come. Yeah. Is this on your work plan or do you need to ask permission from the um, It's on our work plan. Okay, I'm pretty great. sure I will <laughs> yeah. double check. I think I'm pretty sure that we um, had something there along those lines, but that's a good point. That's a good segue into number seven since the, the main event was canceled. Now we have more time to work on our um, 
mural. The, yeah, the specifics of the mm -hmm. mural project. Mm -hmm. We're still thinking that same space. <laughs> we're, uh, so we're actually sorry. Gonna put it um, right underneath, right where the 36 uh, bike path is, um, and where Cole Creek meets. Mm -hmm. We have a pretty decent size wall, and so we thought we cool. would put it right there. Okay, cool. on the way to a Vista Hospital. Mm -hmm. I actually have a picture. I think, you do. I think you sent it to yeah. me. Yeah, because I can I'm really like, find it in my the space. <laughs> that, that's a really cool space for me. Yeah, I think it's kind of fun, and um, actually, it gets used a lot. Yeah. yeah, and I think people will see it, and mm -hmm. it'll, it'll kind of force. Them. So the thirty, you know, the uh, Coal Creek corridor, the underpass that goes under thirty six, headed yes. to Louisville. Mm -hmm. There's the bikeway goes up toward Sports Stable, and then back by Superior Liquor. There's a wall there that's mm -hmm. perfect. For, okay. It's like a three way intersection mm -hmm. of paths. Oh, here. Cool. Did you find it? Yeah. Oh yeah. So that mm -hmm. wall is just begging for. It's right over here. Yeah, if you just yeah, take the Cold Creek path, if you go right that way. Yeah. It goes underneath 36 right there, and it comes up by the golf course. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's great. Create so some type of panel it's made and then they get of, applied to the wall. The concrete. Yeah, concrete. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that, that is a cool location. Yeah, and it's kind of fun. I've mm -hmm. thought about how. Yep. Yeah, I've yeah, talked to the parks guy. <laughs> she knows how to yeah. build it. They're ready to yeah. build it with right. me. <laughs> cool. I did a little sweet talking, but they're, they're ready to help me build. So, cool. And I, I approved it with the board. I, the, or, the board was copacetic with it that even though that was intended for the main event, mm -hmm. that you are welcome to do it at the 4th of July and Chili Fest and continue with the project. Oh, good. And Katie right. had an idea, too, about a couple um, opportunities this summer. For with kids. the summer camp kids. Mm. So I, I've sure talked with um, Danielle over there and... Oh, <laughs> oh my board. Do you want me to the board? Um, doing, maybe having them walk over to Founders Park or Asti Park and do a painting day for one of their field trips. So is this like um, some type of artist comes up with the design for it and then it's like paint by number basically on mm -hmm. the different mm -hmm. fields? Well, it's, it's yeah. your friend. Yeah, I... You saw, were you here last month? She was late. late. Oh, okay, because Sandy late. hasn't seen it. It's so oh, super cool. Oh, already have a design? No. no. You'll have no, to move I did talk here to by one, me, Sandra. I talked to one mural uh, person. I have I have a couple options really now that we have a little bit more time to. Um, and we know what the wall's going to be, the size yeah, of the wall. Yeah, we know the size of the wall and can, um, yeah. Yeah, I think that you'll probably. You know what you're going to paint the individual pieces on? Um, you go well. The one, yes. the one piece of work that we, as a committee, will have to do is prime all the little squares. So it'll be squares. There's, it's a square. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Katie will show us an yeah. um, example. I'm um, not sure where. I can't remember where I put them. Uh, yeah, because I was just going to say when I've done it in uh, college classes, the, the um, you know canvas boards come in standard sizes, but not square. Oh, yeah, no, the idea is we <laughs> cut boards and we prime them, and then we'll make sure. So one of the issues that came up with this project is that their printout, what they were supposed to yeah. transfer and paint on their board, was not the same size. And so they did a great job, <laughs> regardless. But we, yeah. we were thinking so this, that we'll try really hard to make our squares the same size as um, a, the a grid printout. on the, the mural, yeah. yeah, has to match. Yeah, so they'll they get yeah. a sheet of paper and then they paint it on here, mm -hmm. and then throughout after each event, we'll start putting out up up so the squares, cool. and then here's mm -hmm. kind of their final project. Uh, Sandy, look at this, and then look at the original that the artist drew. It's fun. Yeah, it's yeah. Fun. So that's the original. Fun mm -hmm. and funky, and and then mm -hmm. show us again. And it's mm -hmm. colorful. It and is. Yeah. So really did you cool. design something that's reminiscent of the town, or just mm -hmm. some? Well, we can. I mean, I was throwing, I was throwing out ideas. Like I had a view of the mountains and looking across Wildflower Park, and then some of our historic okay. components. But you give them an idea. In the it's middle, it was so you give them an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of details. Yeah. 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 Detail and then there was. I, I just throw flowers. Are you gonna have wait until take that picture until June-ish when those wildflowers are in bloom? Well, we, you can fake the wildflowers, yeah. but then I was also, no. <laughs> then, so it actually just occurred to me, you know, have you guys ever been in Glacier in Boulder where they have the mural on the wall and you have to find the little bears? It would be really fun 
Aww. to hide prairie dogs. Oh, that yeah. is so oh, oh, my God. God. So, <laughs> <right there. laughs> Sandy just rolled her eyes at us again. Oh, that would be oh, so fun. Our mascot, <laughs> <laughs> committee mascot <laughs> is a prairie dog. Prairie dog. <laughs> better than a rattlesnake, so. Yeah, yeah that's going to look really cool on that wall. And the idea is that the way we'll build it is that we'll be able to take it down and the wall piece will still stay there, but the panels will come off and mm -hmm. hopefully we can put it somewhere else next summer and do another one. And do another one. In the original town art city. Darn. So, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Can't that'll wait. look really cool. Yeah. And there's great. a ton of bikers that go through on that. It's path. fun. I run there all the time. And yeah, I just, every time I run by, I it's the perfect it. location. I know. It's going to be right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'll keep pursuing somebody to, to create. Well, Jane had some muralists yeah. too. Oh, good. Okay. Remember, Perfect. she had. I need oh, to send you Oh, she had somebody in Denver. Too. I think there's a, a more local. I think I have a older. Yeah, well, okay. and, and I haven't heard back from the. It's the end of school, and I'm going to wait till the school's over. But the um, art teacher at Superior Elementary mm. does um, murals? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Kevin Cologne had one too. I'll send it to oh, you. Oh, okay, good. That's very exciting. Yeah. Good. Hey, um, that actually just reminded me, do you know if the um, Slick is doing the Battle of the Bands? I was just going to say, yes, they are. Okay. Um, it will probably be in August. Um, I think they're thinking the 11th or the, the 4th or the 11th. But it will probably be at Global Sound. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't think they're going to do the park anymore. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. So, I don't know. They, they're working out the details okay. right now. All right. Well, why would they... I'm just curious. Might not do it somewhere in Superior. Um, I, that's, I don't know. Mm. I didn't listen to it. So. We can find it. I was just yeah. more curious than anything. Okay. Because yeah. um, we're running out of time quick. Yeah. And Eight. We need to do this Caps one. dinner with the town board is June 11th. Coming up fast. Um need four or five discussion points. Um, June 11th is their and board meeting. And you do think that would actually be a problem? And they're they got the long-term, you know, uh, the district. It? June 11th. I would say community center might be on that list. Mm -hmm. And do your you, perspectives on that. Yeah, even short, even short no matter where it is in the process, I think it's worthwhile for you to articulate your thoughts. Um, do we want to talk about the potential for an art district? Because that's nothing that's ever been floated before. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think so because we're going to try to make it part of the vision for the Northwest Corridor, which is certainly a, a salient topic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you want to show them things like this mural and the concept and what's happening? Have they seen that? Sure, and. It, I don't know if at that point we'll have any squares ready, but um, just, but absolutely we can. Just what we saw today again. Um, Pictures worth a thousand words. And well, we and actually we could put together just a little PowerPoint. We show the location and show some of this right, so um, yeah. in terms of. I, I might be able to get some more pictures. Well, I think another talking her. point should be. Mm -hmm. um, the ongoing main event, how we created that. We want that, we want that to be. How do we make it happen? How, how do we, we make, make it happen? Yes. We want Why it was it time? ongoing funding? I missed that. Ranch oh. canceled. Um, because of what? Timing, there just wasn't enough time to pull it all together. Um, well, that's irrelevant. That's. And I like talking about the main event because, you know, if this arts district comes through, that's what we can we um yes that name well I mean we it, it came up in our meeting I mean we were the ones that created that yeah I'm, I'm concerned so, yeah that we, that we it doesn't we, matter the concept and the brand names it's our brand that I think is important to talk that about that we want to start our our I think Katie can just have Patrick check with the attorney right yeah. that we okay. want it to be our signature event, the main event at downtown Superior. Right. Yeah. Well, we can bring up the tape from that meeting because we made it perfectly clear that that was ours. Right. Yeah. And let's just do and it. Let's have it done. Because it's, this yeah. is a cheap thing to do. And yeah. it sounds like one of those things that all of a sudden, you know, two months from now, we're going, what? We were going to do this main event and we wanted to do, I mean, how many hours have we spent talking about doing a main event block party 
bringing in the food trucks. That was Karen's working on the food trucks and doing these cool things with farmers markets and yeah, whatever. Yeah, we've already laid the the, the groundwork. Right. Mm -hmm. So we don't. All right. So I think that's. Good. I, I don't know if Those we bring that up with the meeting. Those are pretty major. Those are pretty major things. Okay. I only have potential for Art Center and Vision for Northwest Sub Area. Ongoing main event. Community Center, Community Center Arts, Arts District. Arts, that's part Arts, of the Northwest Quarter and then the main event. Do you guys want to Community mention? Center discussion. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, anything about your crosswalk painting, like your idea? Oh, um, probably just an update of yeah. that. Can you show a PowerPoint of what it's going to mm -hmm. look like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there we might, who knows, maybe we'll have sprayed something by then. Right. Do you okay. work on your groundhog? Uh, I'm working on it. I actually Is there an update of the yeah. Daryl? You are needed. Has the artist proceeded in any any meaningful way that we could uh, show? Um, I should have something by then. Yeah, we kind of have a landscape plan. I've sent him so that he can so finalize can, can all we get an Oh, we could just on, get an on update on the, on, the um, on Dow. Absolutely, yeah. I think Dow. that's a perfect. Um, well, and I think we also want, which he was very on board with engaging the community in his process over the next year. What's that going to look like? Um, oh. You know, I mean, meet I, the artist, talk to the artist, and that's a year away, but still. Well, within it, but I think um, we haven't even seen a final design. And I agree. I don't think any of that comes about until after a final design. Has um, okay. However, our, it's almost mid-year. And you will be working on your 2019 plan very soon. It probably doesn't hurt to run some possible artist-oriented program by the board when you're sitting in front of them. Right. I, I, and I, I like that way. idea. I think it's really cool that if he could share as he's going along in the process. I don't know if pictures of no. I mean, just the concept know. that you guys will want to right. do this thing. Yeah. Just so they've heard it. So when you come forth the next time and say, mm -hmm. it's time to do this thing, they're ready. <laughs> he suggested, <laughs> like November, for instance, that he would be out here and fly out and he would do, do come to the talk, or... you know. Well, and that's in 2018 still. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Do it now. That's exciting. Okay, so do we need anything more to fill? I think that's plenty. No, I'll type these out and send them to okay. your confirmation then. I'll get into those. But be thinking of... Uh, um, uh, things you might want in next year's budget. Um, you know, your, 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 your thing on this, your number nine, this cultural arts master plan. If you're going to be asking for a paid consultant to assist mm -hmm. this committee with well, that was a big deal that, that we paper, talked about last month. That's yeah. a huge deal. And so that would probably be wise to address because it's going to cost money. At the, sort of at like the a dinner. post that the post master plan, the parks master plan. We want a cultural yeah. arts master plan. We need one for yeah. the town. Um, right. So okay. those things, so those big ticket point. items, important items. This is your opportunity to mm -hmm. discuss. It. I think we've got some. Big, that means yeah. So can you maybe you talk to Daryl and get this streamlined into? Um, are we going to have a? Are we meeting at 5:30? So we have an hour and a half. Good. Okay, so mark your calendars. Um, yeah, I'll Monday. give you an update and I'll confirm with Matt. But it's a Monday. It's a, Monday. <laughs> so, you know, it's a board meeting. Monday. No, no, June 11th. June 11th. Oh, oh that. Yeah. 5:30. Um, okay, number nine, establish an up committee. An up committee. An up committee. <laughs> we, <wanted to laughs> we did that. We wanted. Um, well, we talked about it and just want to see who still wants to do it. We really just need to set dates and sit down. I mean, part of it is finding the time to do it. And May has been not kind to me finding time to do things. So, because um, I, I know that was one of Jane's things. She wanted to be on that. Master plan. Well, and not everybody's here, um, but maybe we could, with those that are here that are interested, we could set an, a next date so that we can at least start talking about it. I'm interested. Um, okay. Um, 
And I think um, I've looked at Louisville's and they just did it in 2017. And they have a lot more that we won't have, but there's, I think it's a great starting point in terms of looking at what they have thought about and um, what their hopes are. And it's a, it's a current plan. It's not something Did you that uh, send that out to everybody? I haven't sent that out. Yeah. I drag around a copy of it. Um, <laughs> send it out so everybody I looked at it, it online. So that a couple of towns. Yeah. Um, or just the link, maybe just send the link out. <coughs> yeah. Um, actually, I was just, it just occurred to me too. So I procured the domain artandsuperior.com and I already started putting some basic stuff up there, but we could have a private login where we just house all of these links for everybody so people can just access and go and get links if you want. I can do that. Um, I was hoping that Angela was going to be here because she's interested in working on the artist registry as well. Um, well I'm so glad you created the domain because I printed all these things out and like studied domains and stuff. And uh -huh. I'm like, I've never created a domain before. So I'm glad you did it. <laughs> well, I, I, I went with a more generic art and superior because art, I think superior artist registry was available, but I thought, well, that's really limiting. Art and superior is open to mm -hmm anything and oh, the artist great. registry component um, is is a part of it not just Good. not the, the main component when are we painting this when if you're gone july when are we painting yeah um i don't know that's a good question and if we have to prime all the squares for the wall right we we which we can do. I'm around all summer. June. Someone just tell me how to do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm here all summer. Well, well, there's two of you, or there, there's, you know. The Wicked, uh, the Wicked yeah. Sister and the Friendly. Oh, yeah, the Wicked Sister. She's mentioned there's two of her now. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. So, well, if you want them done nicely, that's one day. <laughs> you, yeah. I <laughs> am going on vacation from next Thursday until. June like fourth. Um, so after that, I was going to go and start getting all the wood and all mm. that stuff. I'm back so in town that time too, so that's good. So that so way we I, have. I would well, I wonder if we can get it done. We can um, get we'll to figure out somebody, squares. yeah, to help us with just the priming. Um, yeah. Because those are too big. Use painting the crosswalks and getting all. Yeah, the we're still. Uh, so square uh, canvas on the squares. Mm -hmm. No, what's the surface? Just wood, plywood. Oh, right. plywood. That, you, that you're painting on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's why we want to prime them. And then every time we put them up on the wall, we'll put a clear coat of lacquer on, so that way they stay. And you can mm -hmm. also put anti-graffiti stuff on if it's yeah. If oh, really? Necessary. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a good idea. idea. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. Yep. Yeah. It's expensive paint, but you can do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So at um. So after you get back on June fourth, we can talk about putting this down to. Talk about when we can, you're going to have them all cut and then we just need to prime them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just have some people cut them. Okay. I don't want to cut that many squares. How many are there? Well, we have to figure that out, but okay. there, there'll be a lot. Which is good because yeah. I think that you're going to have a lot of people in Superior that are going to want to do this. Well, and we might at each event say there's only 50 squares. Available? Yeah. Okay. Or, well, we'll have First to kind of 50. Talk about, yeah, that exactly. Register. So we'll, we'll push it out. And, and people can only do one. Right. That is the hope, is that. Well, why don't we say that, and they have to register their name. Yeah, they can And do then, if it doesn't get finished, in, mm -hmm. they can do another one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think, and I think at Chili Fest, we'll kind of determine how many more we have left. And, and I mean, do we want to set an age limit? Do we want, like, a five-year-old to have a square? I mean, we will want to figure yeah. that out. Mm. Um, well, no, I know. I mean, yes. Maybe, so maybe we have, so if we're going to have a booth at Chili Fest with the squares, we have some activity that the younger kids can do so that we aren't excluding them. They can feel yeah. like they're participating. But the color we, piece of paper. Um, so how old does, it, does one have to be to... To do that quality of work. Well, oh, I don't think you need to worry about quality. It's kind of charming if but some it, are, I know, you know, awkward and others are. Right address the <laughs> age thing. Seven. Uh, I would say uh, first ten, grade. Like if you're seven. first grade. Okay. Yeah, seven. Are you able to follow? I mean, because they can't just 
be them the covering. one the one thing um yeah, my friend said is that questions. you know with you guys handing them out you could hand out an easier what looking square to, like, uh, to somebody uh, younger to someone who's and, only eight yeah or somebody that does not feel like they have a huge artistic fill you know and then maybe someone has a little bit more detail to somebody that feels more comfortable that way but I just so think being prepared for that because you know that people are going to come up and want yeah. to do more than one or want their two-year-old yeah. to color the square. So if we have backups, we yeah. could have like backups. maybe little I tiles do. or something. I, I was just going to say the same way. we make a little yeah. kid version or something. Like along the bottom or something where when they're on their bikes going on the underpass, mm -hmm. You have little four inches along, they could, and that could be the frame. That could be the yeah, frame that's a good idea. for so the mural because that's you're actually a great idea. So then they they're still a part of it, and they right. see yeah. it when they bike by or walk by. Because you're gonna have a lot of a lot of kids in Superior who really want to <laughs> paint. Yeah. Oh no, I was just trying to figure out, but I think that's. But then they perfect. can they they can be totally random, whatever they want to do. Good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. More work for us to inclusive. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we're still waiting from, for, to hear from Alex about paint. Katie and I talked about um, creating two different uh, crosswalk templates, one out of vinyl and one out of like the core plast, and just see which one works better, and then we can go from there. And I still have to go out and measure the crosswalks to see. But they're all across, the, they're crazy different widths and lengths. And I think if we just do like a two foot high by most of the crosswalks are the same width. Um, We're doing the look with the eyes. Yeah, the look with the are eyes. Are we going to make the eyes different colors from I, depending on the crosswalk? The pink eyes, the blue or the, eyes, or the, the whole eyes. look or something, or and something. then the prairie dog popping up on the side. No, no, no. <laughs> oh my God, we could we make a little prairie dog popping up on one of the eyes. Alex loved that idea. I love that idea. Um, I love that idea. I think we yeah. need yeah, and the dogs pop up them. often in this committee. Yes. Are we good with the flowers? We did. I mean, I took a ton of pictures last fall, but we're good with the flowers. Vargas has got all that, so I, it's I, beautiful. I, and last year, I uh, I uh, relayed all those flower comments, and maybe they will be incorporated or not. You know, I forgot what they are actually, but they mm -hmm. were relayed. There are pictures on our um, Pinterest account, so if you want to go look, because I posted all the pictures that I had and that people gave us. I did send a note over to Patrick that along Coal Creek to look at the butt outs because they were starting to get pretty shabby. Oh, okay. What's a butt out? You know, when you're going down to Coal Creek, there's probably a more appropriate architectural term, but it's the those, bump outs. The bump outs. The bu when you're yeah. going down Coal Creek, oh, the little oh, bump outs. I've got the creek in my mind. <laughs> Coal Creek yeah. Drive. You mean Coke 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 Drive. Drive. Those things that come out. I mean, like there's areas on the you know, the block on the 200 where the plastic is coming up and the pipes are showing, it just looks But they shabby. haven't planted them yet, right? No, they did plant them, but last year and this year, they're, it's just shabby looking. I mean, I mean, it just is, they're... Oh, good, good so. to point that out. So I just want to share one other thought. I had kind of an epiphany um, while I was reading through the comments from the um, survey last fall about the Northwest area, mm -hmm. that was the same type of thing with a lot of data, but also the comments are all listed and I was kind of scrolling through that and reading a lot of that. And I know this committee, we've had kind of an ongoing theme and a discussion about like identity of our town mm -hmm. and the brand of our town and stuff like that. So it was pretty interesting for me to kind of read people's perspectives and what they think about the town. And there were a couple different that stood out to me. And one was just like very utilitarian saying, you know, this town is basically just a huge subdivision with a Costco. And that's one way of thinking that's about it, right? A Costco. A huge a subdivision, subdivision with a Costco. Costco. Like, it's a, it's a convenient place to live. It's good for families, and it's close to the shopping, you know, big box shopping things that people like. So I was like, that's one way of thinking about it. You know, just very purely utilitarian. <coughs> there's also the people that kind of explain, like, okay, the reason why I moved here instead of Louisville or instead of somewhere else is because... It's just so pretty, you know, with all the undeveloped land that surrounds it. And, you know, whatever you want to say about Rock Creek, like, it really is a pretty neighborhood mm -hmm. with all the open ravines. And it's so, you know, with all the pathways, there's just so many different ways. Like, I jog Purple and I... Park. Yeah, the parks are gorgeous. And it is just Patrick pretty. does an amazing... Or yeah, his yeah. team does an amazing job with it's that stuff. It's just a pretty place to live. So I was thinking that, you know, that's a reason why someone might choose 
this town over another town. So that's something that we could say is part of our identity. It's just we've we've got this big open space over here, the vistas. That's why that's on our trails. Right. So yeah. So um, I just think that's a great um, principle or guiding principle or sense of identity to keep in mind as we move forward and as we plan what we are going to do with the rest of our town. Like that's what we want to be known for, right? Is having pretty nicely landscaped areas that are pedestrian friendly and that high quality of life and preserving that, you know? So I was like, well, that, that just made sense to me. Like that's the reason people move here mm -hmm. and, instead of another place. Yeah, it's true. So we, I, I really feel like moving forward as we do this planning, we need to keep that in mind and preserve the best part of our town. <laughs> and not just be a subdivision with Costco. Yeah. Well, seriously, because yeah. that's what a lot of people like. Oh, you live in Superior. Oh, oh, yeah, Rock Creek and Costco. Exactly. Give us five years on this committee, and they will never say that again. <laughs> right, yeah. And our great artwork and the roundabout. Exactly. And where'd that come from? That's yeah. what they'll be An original say. town in the Northwest Corridor. Right. Yeah. We're just yeah. getting started. <laughs> so I will see you all in August. So you're seriously, oh my, I'm seriously not here in June or July for this June? meeting. I, I actually have tickets to go to a concert. Oh, okay. So it's not like you're going to <laughs> California the month of no, June no, no, and then Vermont no, the I month of July. And I am attending that I paid money for to go see. So. Very cool. I was standing at JFK at the airport, you know, the security check or whatever. Oh, we don't have to take a look. And, um, we don't? Yay! Yay. Yay. Nick Lachey and his That's wife were night. behind me oh. in the line. Huh? It's like, what's that weird? Okay. Nick Lachey was in the line, and I, and I said, Mike, Mike. I actually Nick think Lachey's the town manager, Mike.